Before watching the video, don't forget to subscribe the channel and enable bell notification to never miss an update from us. Hello everyone and welcome. This is Ashma Shukla, your current affairs and banking awareness faculty on entry platform. And in this video, we'll be talking about uh, the major news events that have happened in the month of August. Now, this is not a theory session. This is a mixed session. That is in this we have questions for your practice where you can put in your answers as well. And we'll be, I'll be giving you the answers and explanation alongside. So it's more of a practice session for all of you in a form of a quiz so that you can practice alongside and get the information as well. Now, starting on the discussion, now there are going to be multiple parts of this month. This is not a complete one video section. This has multiple parts. So go through all the parts for the complete coverage. Starting on the uh, questions with the first question right here, which is <clears throat> that which city has announced to establishment of a specialized court focused on combating money laundering. Recently, a specialized court was launched by one of the following cities, which major purpose was to handle the money laundering issue of the, uh, of the country, especially. So, uh, answer for this question, you have a few seconds. Quickly answer the question. And... The right answer for this is going to be Dubai option A. Option A is the right answer. Dubai is the first such, um, Dubai has got the first such um, specialized court for combating money laundering. Now, this court has been opened in court of first instance and court of appeal. Here, one more thing that you need to know about is the current head of Dubai. That is Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid al Maktou. He is the vice president and prime minister of the UAE and also is the ruler of Dubai. He is the one who had inaugurated this. Right? What is the purpose? What is this court going to handle? It will tackle all the financial crimes and whatever uh, endeavors are there of UAE in the combating of crime related to money, all of them are going to be handled. To anti money laundering and counter, uh, countering the finance of terrorism. Next is what is the rank of India in the Global Manufacturing Risk Index 2021, which was released by US based property consultant Kushman and Wakefield. So, Kushman and Wakefield ke dwara, Global Manufacturing Risk Index 2021 jari kiya gaya. Now, is may Bharat ka rank kya tha? That is the question. What was the rank of India? The answer for this question, that's right. All those who went with this first option, that is two, that is right. Rank of India was second in this. Also, in terms of ranking, we need to know who released the ranking for which the answer is already here. That is Kashman and Wakefield. Next, another form of question can be the top country in this or the top three which of the following is not in the top three so answer is going to be china which was in the first rank india which was at the second rank and united states of america which was in the third rank right all right next which we have is india along with which country has conducted a joint exercise in the gulf of aden so recently an exercise was conducted in the gulf of aden and the answer for this that is a uh, so the questions asking where, uh, with which country had we conducted this exercise? That is going to be Germany. With Germany, India had conducted recently a naval exercise. Now here, one more thing that we need to know is that what kind of exercise? Because there are multiple times when this question has been asked that um, ye exercise jo hai, ye kis ki hai? Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard. So you need to know that it was a naval exercise. Now, talking about Gulf of Aden, it is also known as Gulf, uh, Gulf of Barbera. Gulf of Aden has another name which you need to know that is Gulf of Barbera. This is the second name and it is a deep water gulf between Yemen and Arabian Sea. So, in the east is Arabian Sea, in the north is Yemen. And in the west, we have Jibouti. Uh, there it is located in the East Africa and Western Asian region, right? Also, related to Germany, 
you need to know about who is the uh, current chancellor of germany a very important person from germany she is known as the most powerful this rank is the most powerful in germany so who is the current chancellor that is going to be angela merkel angela merkel is the current chancellor of germany and the most powerful rank also there is a president of germany that is frank walter steinmeier so frank Walter Steinmeier is the current president of Germany. Now, in from Indian Navy, we had three kind which had participated in the exercise, whereas in Germany it was Baron Frigate which had participated in this exercise. Next is Avni Lekhara. Avni Lekhara ji has won country's first gold medal in Tokyo Paralympics. She was the winner of the first gold in Paralympics. She is associated with which sport? That is the question. That is Avni Lekhara ji is associated with which of the following sport? She is the first gold medal winner in that sport, and that is going to be shooting. Right answer. Those who have answered for shooting, perfectly right. In shooting, Avni Lekhara ji has won gold, and she has got the first gold in the game of shooting in parallel. In which category did she compete? She had won in women's 10 meter air rifle, in which the event was SH1. She has won two medals in Paralympics altogether. One was bronze, and one was gold. Now. She had a score of two forty nine point six in the final, with which she had won, and she is the fourth Indian athlete, fourth Indian athlete to win a gold medal in Paralympics. So it was Murli Kant Petkar ji nineteen seventy two who had won a gold medal in uh, Paralympics. Second was javelin thrower Devendra Jajaria ji in two thousand four. In twenty sixteen it was. In two thousand four and twenty sixteen, both was Devendra Jajaria ji in javelin throw, and in high jump we had Tangavelu Mariyappan, who was supposed to be the flag bearer as well for the Paralympics, right? So these are the other three people who have won gold in the Paralympics. Which company has backed three twenty eight million contract to support the C one three zero J aircraft? Fleet from Indian Air Force. So, three twenty eight million dollar agreement has happened recently, and it ha it is a five year contract. Duration of this contract is five years. The question is, which company has backed this contract? And the answer for that part is going to be Lockheed Martin. Option A. Lockheed Martin has backed this contract. Now, which U.S.-based renewable energy startup has launched India's first green hydrogen electrolyzer Giga factory in Bengaluru? Here, you need to remember this is very important. That is, in which city has it been opened? That city is going to be Bengaluru. Next is going to be where, uh, which of the following company is the one which has launched it? Now, before we go on to the company, you need to know about green hydrogen. Now, green hydrogen is considered as the future of uh, the world, future energy source of the world, right? And we have National Hydrogen Mission also going on. So, how is this electrolyzer manufacturing company important? Because it manufactures the um, PEM, that is proton exchange membrane. So, what is it going to manufacture? PEM, proton exchange membrane, which will further help in uh, the production of green hydrogen. Right now, the name of the company is Ohmium. So, it is Ohmium International, which is a U.S.-based renewable energy startup, which has launched this green hydrogen electrolyzer Giga factory. Now, this is going to manufacture PEM, hydro, that is proton exchange membrane, hydrogen electrolyzers. The initial manufacturing capacity is 500 megawatt per year, and it is going to increase to 2 gigawatt per year soon enough. Right? So, it's going to give an end-to-end -end solution within the country rather than being dependent on outside.
Next is Reserve Bank of India has increased India to Nepal remittances limit to what amount from the current amount which is 50,000 per remittance. The current limit is was 50,000 per remittance and it has been increased. This increase is only for digital mode. Now one thing you need to know is that if someone is doing via cash, we cash transaction agar kar raha hai, there's a remittance being done via cash, then the older limits will apply but these limits have been removed for digital form of transaction and answer for this the remittance limit has been increased to 2 lakh rupees now uh, talking further about other limits that have been changed regarding this that is going to be that the, there was a cap of 12 remittances in a year per remitter. This has also been removed. This limit of 12 remittances per year has also been removed only for digital mode of transaction. Now, second thing, apart from that, um, so we have what these payments are related to. These are going to facilitate the retirement and pension related payments to all the ex-servicemen who are settled in Nepal. Now, next is which payments app has sent, entered the peer-to-peer -peer lending with its product 12% club to allow consumers to earn 12% interest on funds they invest. There's a 12% club which has been started recently and this club is a, that whether you invest or you are taking a loan, you have to pay 12% interest or you will earn 12% interest. Either ways, it is 12%. It's a peer-to-peer -peer lending. Uh, so, it's going to allow consumers to earn 12% interest and they can borrow at 12% interest. Which payments app has done that? All those who have answered for Bharat Pay, that is going to be perfectly right. It is Bharat Pay who has launched this. Now, uh, they can, uh, now in this, the loan which can be availed is going to be a collateral free loan of up to 10 lakh rupees, up to 10 lakh rupees, this is the maximum limit on 12% club for a duration of 3 months. This is important for what duration, 3 months, what is the maximum amount, 10 lakh and if someone is investing in any form, they also get 12% of interest or they can earn 12% of interest. Then we have a new book with the title, The Kapil Sharma Story. Who has authored this book or who is the author of this book? In books and authors, as we have already told you, books and authors are very important because they are direct questions and they get you direct marks if you remember the right answer. Also, for the past four months, four to six months, you need to remember the latest books because they are the ones which are being asked. Answer for this question, that is going to be Ajitabha Bose. Other authors which are there, they also have recent books released. So that is Vishram Bedekarji who has written the book Battlefield. KJ Alphonse, uh, an ex-minister, he has written Accelerating India, Seven Years of Modi Government. He was a minister in Modi Government itself. Tanushri Podarji has released a book, An Invitation to Die, a Colonel Acharya Mistra. Then, the next we have is Teg Chandji has been uh, announced as the flag bearer of the opening or he was the new flag bearer of the opening ceremony of Paralympics in Tokyo Olympics. Now, here the question is that how many Paralympians were there? How many Paralympians were there uh, in the Paralympics from India's side? That is how many were there. Who was the earlier one or the person who had been selected earlier? That was Mariyappan Tangaveluji. So earlier it was Mariyappan Tangaveluji who was the flag bearer. And then due to his COVID infection, he was quarantined and therefore Tekchandji had taken over as the flag bearer. Answer for this, how many athletes were there? There were 54 athletes from India's side, which were the largest till date from India, there has never been Paralympians more than 54 ever who have participated. It was the largest contingent from the subcontinent of India. Which bank has won an award for the best improvement from baseline performance on the Ease Index? 
So this is not the ease of doing business index. Definitely not that. That has been closed off now. So if we have a look at ease index, which was released. Now, who had released this? First comes this, who released this? It was the finance minister of India. That is Nirmala Sitharaman. Nirmala Sitharaman ji had released this index uh, that was uh, for public sector banks. PSB reforms agenda ease uh, 3.0 was also released. Reform index for ease 3.0 was released and the targets for ease 4.0 were announced. Now, if we look at the baseline performance, the winner was Indian Bank. Talking about... Um, other category winners, so public sector bank reforms agenda, it was the fourth edition for which new targets were released and the ranking for third edition was done. State Bank of India, Bank of Baroda and Union Bank of India, they won awards for the best performing banks and overall top in all the categories, taking all the categories into consideration, State Bank of India was the top rank. Which among the following Bollywood star was appointed as the brand ambassador for Delhi government Desh Ke Mentors Initiative. So uh, if we have a look at Desh Ke Mentors Initiative, which was released by um, the government of Delhi recently, that is going to be actor Sonu Sudji. Sonu Sudji was appointed. Now, who is the chief minister of New Delhi? That is going to be Arvind Kejriwal ji. Arvind Kejriwal ji is the current chief minister. The minister for health and family welfare, Mansukh Mandavia ji, took over as the charge of chairperson of Stop TB Partnership Board. The United Nations target for tuberculosis is by which year? Now, since the Minister of Health has been changed earlier, it was Dr. Harshwardhan who was Health Minister. So, he was the uh, chairperson of Stop TV Partnership Board. But since we have changed the minister, therefore, the chairperson of Stop TV Partnership Board has also changed. Now, uh, Manzuk Mandavia ji is the new chairperson. For India, if we have a look at, the target for tuberculosis for India is 2025. But, United Nations target is along with sustainable development that goes for 23rd. So, um, till which year is Mansuk Mandavia ji going to be the chairperson? Till the uh, year 2024, Mansuk Mandavia ji is going to be the chairperson of the Stop TV board. Which insurance company has introduced a new mobile application with the name Ananda to facilitate the onboarding of prospective customers? So, a uh, application with the name Ananda has been released recently. Which of the following insurance company has released this application? And the answer for this is going to be Life Insurance Corporation, LIC. What is the full form of Ananda? That is Atma Nirbhar Agent's new business digital application. This is the full form of Ananda and it is going to enhance the paperless solution. It's going to provide a paperless solution for the new business processes and onboarding new customers. Who is the current chairperson of LIC? That is going to be M.R. Kumar. Who has been appointed as Executive Director of Reserve Bank of India recently? So we have someone who has been appointed as the new Executive Director of Reserve Bank of India. Who was that? That is going to be Ajay Kumarji. Option A, perfectly right. Ajay Kumarji is going to look after the Department of Currency Management, Foreign Exchange Department and the Premises Department for Reserve Bank of India. Next is which government agency along with Cisco has jointly launched the next phase of women entrepreneurship platform or which can be called as WEP and the new phase is known as WEP Next. So the question is that which of the following um, company is the one with whom this partnership has happened? So this WEP program on a whole is a program by Niti Ayu. Therefore, the partnership is of Niti Aayog and Cisco. Now, uh, when the first phase was released, at that time also, the partnership was with Cisco. When the first time WEP launched, hua, us time the partnership was with Cisco. And now, Niti Aayog has also partnership with Cisco. Ke liye bhi Cisco ke 
right? So it's a flagship program of Niti Aayog. WEP stands for Women Entrepreneurship Platform, and it is the first of its kind. WEP was the first of its kind unified access portal, which brings together women from different parts of India to realize their entrepreneurial aspirations and promote the startup ecosystem in India and promote women to own those businesses across the country. This digital payments company has got an in principle approval from Reserve Bank of India to op operate as an account aggregator. So which company has got an approval to be an account aggregator recently? All right, answer for this question. Now this in principle grant has been this in principle grant has been given to PhonePay. The PhonePay is the new principal aggregator. PhonePay is a subsidiary. Walmart has been, uh, Walmart, it is backed by Walmart, PhonePay, and that has got the account aggregator. So, parent company of PhonePay, if we have a look at parent company, that is going to be Walmart. All right, Walmart is the parent company. Then, how can it? Uh, what are the uh, benefits that it's going to get now? So, PhonePay can now launch its account aggregator platform that will enable free and instant exchange of financial data between financial information users or FIUs and financial information providers or FIPs with due consent from the customer. Account aggregators, what is the work of account aggregators? That is, they are responsible for providing the services based on explicit consent of individual clients, which includes the transfer, but not storing the data of client. Transfer is there, but storage is not there. Next, President Ramnath Kovind ji has laid the foundation stone for Ayush University recently in which of the following state. So, recently, a uh, first Ayush University for that particular state was unveiled and that was for Uttar Pradesh, UP. In UP, the first Ayush University was unveiled and that was by uh, during the visit of President Ramnath Kovind ji. Now, uh, he also had inaugurated Mahayogi Guru Goraknath Vishwavidyale in the city on the same day of the inaugural of Ayush University. Then we have Defence Minister Rajnath Singh Ji who inaugurated Army Sports Institute Stadium in Pune. This stadium has been named after whom? Army Sports Institute Stadium has been launched recently, has been renamed uh, after whom? So, Army Sports Institute Stadium in Pune, it has been named after Neeraj Chopra ji after his historic win in the Olympics, winning a gold medal, first gold in athletics from, for India. And who, had, um, who was there alongside was the chief of army staff, that is General Manoj Mukund Narwane ji, and Southern Army Commander, that was Lieutenant General J.S. Nan ji. Maharashtra government has launched which special mission for women from poor families who have lost their husbands to coronavirus infection? The Maharashtra government has got a new scheme which has been launched for women from poor families. And what is the name of the mission? That is Mission Vatsalya. So there are approximately 18 services which have been selected to be provided or benefits which have been selected to be provided to all those um, families or women specifically or the widows who have uh, suffered already because of COVID. So better servicing is going to be there. There are about 18 services which have been selected. Reserve Bank of India has approved appointment of Hitendra Daviji as the country head for the next three years for which foreign bank? He is going to be the country head, that is, he is going to handle the India segment of that bank. Which country? That is going to be HSBC. For HSBC, he is going to be the country. Competition Commission of India has imposed a penalty of 200 crores on which automotive company for indulging in anti-competitive conduct? So a penalty of 200 crore has been imposed on which automotive company for the anti-competitive conduct of theirs? 
and the answer for this question is going to be Maruti Suzuki. Maruti Suzuki is the company which has received a penalty of 200 crores. MSIL had a discount control policy whereby the dealers were discouraged from giving extra discount or freebies to customers or consumers beyond what was permitted which was the reason why this penalty has been imposed. Which state has become the first state in India to officially implement the national education policy? First state in India to launch the or uh, implement actually the national education policy. And the answer for this question is going to be Karnataka. That's perfectly sorry. Karnataka option B perfectly right Karnataka is the state which has recently started implementing the national education policy and the admissions for that are going to start in universities in this right now Reserve Bank of India has approved reappointment of Sandeep Bakshi ji as the MDN CEO of which bank? So for which bank MDN CEO was Sandeep Bakshi ji for which he has been reappointed and that is going to be ICICI Bank. He has been at the position since October 2018. He was MDN CEO, he was appointed after Chanda Kochar ji in 2018. And his reappointment has been approved from 15th of August. His reappointment term period is going to start and will last till 2023, 3rd of October. Now, with this, um, now this is going to be the end of session for us for this particular part. But we'll be seeing you in the next part with more news events, more questions. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share the video as much as you can. See you in the next video. Till then, good luck with your preparations. Have a great day.